Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Pazder, and I'm the director of the Oncology Center of Excellence here at the FDA. The expanded access program uh, is a difficult one for many patients and physicians to maneuver. Uh, basically, had multiple partners uh, in the process. Uh, obviously, the patient, the physician, uh, the drug company, uh, the FDA, IRBs. So to have these multiple components work together and communicate together sometimes can be a difficult process. Uh, I've had experience with the expanded access programs, especially single patient, uh, from a perspective of a drug regulator as a practicing physician and also a family member of a patient with cancer. So I'm fully aware of the problems that are associated with getting uh, an investigational drug for an individual patient. And here again, it requires a lot of communication between the parties. One of the major principles of the expanded access program, whether it be a large clinical trial that patients get um, a drug, an investigational drug, or a single patient uh, IND mechanism, uh, is the protection of the patient. Uh, we have the FDA look at uh, the qualifications of patients, their past history uh, of, of what they have received, uh, and really pay attention to protecting the safety of the patients. Uh, that said, uh, we communicate with physicians when there is a question regarding denying uh, a single patient IND. Many times there could be a miscommunication between the FDA uh, and the practicing physician, and we try to uh, really examine these uh, issues that may come up uh, between uh, the forms that are filled out and uh, actually what the past uh, medications that the patient has had. Uh, I think it's important for people to realize that many patients want these drugs. Uh, we're here as a public health agency to ensure uh, that patients get these drugs when appropriate in an expeditious fashion, uh, really with an emphasis on patient safety. I think most patients are concerned about toxicities of an investigational drugs, and they want to know what are the presumed benefits that they may get when they receive the drug, and also what are the potential toxicities. Uh, drugs that are being offered in an expanded access program, again, whether it be on a protocol or in a single patient INDs, do not have the same track record as an approved drug with regards to clinical trials uh, with the amount of information that we have on safety and efficacy. So usually patients are willing to take an additional risk. Nevertheless, they do want information regarding what the potential benefits of the drug are as well as the risks that are uh, entailed with the use of these drugs. We take a look, close look and communicate with the physicians, uh, either through writing, through email, or even verbally on the phone, regarding the past history uh, and the past uh, treatments of patients. Um, patients are looking for options usually when they uh, request a single patient IND or participation in a single uh, or participation in a expanded access program. Uh, usually they have had all of the prior therapies. Uh, when we take a look at from the FDA perspective, we want to make sure that patients uh, have received drugs that really have uh, have substantial effects on their disease. Uh, and therefore, if there is a question, we will co sometimes contact the treating physician to ensure patients have had drugs that have known, for example, survival advantages or large response rates, etc. Uh, so we want to ensure that the right drug goes to the right patient. Again, however, uh, most of the patients and the physicians that are coming to these expanded access programs have already received uh, most, if not all, of the effective drugs for their disease. So they're really seeking options for the treatment of their disease. Uh, these drugs many times have preliminary clinical evidence indicating uh, that they do have activity in the disease. Uh, and obviously patients that have exhausted uh, treatment options are looking for these drugs that may offer some hope for their disease. Expanded access and the participation in an expanded access 
program, whether it be from an individual patient perspective, a single patient IND, or an expanded access program using, looking at the drug in a large number of patients, has to be looked from an individual perspective. That individual has to weigh the potential toxicities of the treatment in light, to, in light of the presumed efficacy of the drug. Uh, so here again, I think many times patients that are seeking these treatments have exhausted many of the therapeutic options and are looking for therapies that may offer them some benefit. Most patients are very concerned about the toxicities of these drugs, and it is important for us to convey in writing through informed consent what the expected toxicities of these drugs are. And I think this is a fundamental aspect that most patients uh, look for in making a decision whether an expanded access program is something that they want to participate in. Well, I think there is more confusion regarding how to maneuver the expanded access program. Uh, and that can be hopefully done by providing patients a coherent place where information can be obtained on the expanded access programs. Uh, many times busy physicians are not aware of who to call in a drug company, uh, who to call in the FDA, and therefore having kind of a uniform place so people have a information base of, of where to get this information, what expanded access programs are available, uh, is important for patients in making a decision whether to participate in the program. Here again, what we're looking at many times is a process question here. The primary treatment of any expanded access program, whether it be an expanded access program for patients, an individual patient, uh, is really to provide treatment for these patients. We can also obtain some information uh, regarding the response that a patient may have, the toxicities that a patient may have, but the underlying reason and the underpinning of the expanded access program is to provide drug access to patients, uh, to provide a therapeutic effect, hopefully, of a drug.